Okay, perfect. Uh, so uh, we will start with a very simple example of using Kodi to modernize a Fortran code, a single source file. Today, all the demos that we will see are uh, for single source files. And to tomorrow, we will see more um, realistic size cases with uh, dozens or hand of or hundreds of source files. But today, we are focusing on small examples on in C and Fortran. First, starting with Imeno. Uh, so um, the, the first thing we have to, to do is to make sure that we have a working uh, compiler command. In this case, it is quite straightforward. It's imeno.f90, the source file, so we can compile it with shefortran, imeno.f90. It, it works, it compiles the code. So now uh, we can proceed uh, with, with Kodi. We only have to uh, run the Kodi command, Kodi, uh, Let's start with technical dev. And now the dash dash separator and the and a working compiler command. We can copy and paste the sheet for training menu.f90. As, as you can see here, it is simple because it is a single source file. It, it is a single compilation command. Tomorrow we will see how to do, do this for entire uh, code bases of multiple files. But for single source files, it is this way. Uh, here we have the technical dev. We had an score of 18. This report is mainly used um, for for QA, QA teams. This number should decrease over time. Ideally, it should be zero or at least decrease over time. Um, you can use the JSON output to to track this with a um, with a Jenkins script, for example. Here we have a, a couple of examples. Here it is the Imeno. Uh, script in 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 a demo Jenkins uh, CI/CD that we prepared. Um, I, I, here, for example, we have uh, three different reports of Kodi in JSON output: the checks, the ROI, and the technical depth. Here is the technical depth, and here we can see the console output. Uh, this Jenkins script is invoking. Uh, Kodi with the dash dash asset deudas. Uh, so we have also um, flags to uh, allow Kodi to be invoked from um, from a script free from any in interactive in interaction with the user input. Um, so uh, next we can go to the screening report. That is the most important report. That. Um, Ag aggregates all the the analysis results in one single report, and in this case, Kodi is identifying 18 checkers. And let's okay. And here we can see the ranking of checkers, the last table, where we can see that these 18 checkers are split across these different uh, checkers, uh, uh, checkers ID that were reported. So, for example, we have six occurrences of this issue. Recommendation 68, one of the 63, C of the 69, and five checkers report of the recommendation one. Um, and we always leave suggestions at the bottom of the outputs that uh, they are Kodi commands ready to be invoked. We can copy and paste, and they will always work. In this case, Kodi is suggesting us to run the ROI report. This report is used mainly by managers where Kodi um, makes an estimation of the of the cost that it would take uh, to the development team to manually um, check all the rules of the open catalog and apply them manually um, uh, to, to the, the code, comparing it with the time that it would take uh, with the help of Kodi, with the help of automatically scanning the code and also with the help of the autofixes of, of Kodi that they help to save time. Um, and here it is an explanation of how this formula is calculated. And here you can change the parameters, um, for example, the developer salary per year to customize the, the formula. Um, well, let's go back to the screening report. The other suggestion was to run uh, the checks report because uh, here we can see 18 checkers report for Fortran modernization uh, issues that were detected 
And now we want to see these 18 checkers on, on screen, pinpointing to actual lines of code. And here we can see the 18 checkers. They are ordered by priority. They, they were already ordered by priority in the screening report with the highest priority checkers at the top. Um, in this case, let's follow this one. That is a checker that is identifying a Fortran legacy constructs that we should remove. We can increase the verbosity level of the output. Again, copy and pasting the suggested command. And here we have uh, more details for each one of the checkers. Um, in, in each case, here we can see, uh, for example, um, the, the lines where these Fortran legacy constructs uh, were found. The suggestion, we always leave uh, one, one suggestion for each uh, checker. In this case, Cody is suggesting us to replace the Fortran legacy construct or remove it uh, because it should comply with modern Fortran standards. Uh, we always leak, uh, leave a link to the documentation to the open catalog uh, where you can see further details and, and examples, more, more detailed examples for each one of the checkers as you can see here. Okay, and um, in this case, uh, let's apply this fix manually, uh, removing this pause statement because in this case, this pause is located at the end of the program ex execution, so it uh, we are free from removing it. Uh, it is located at line one three one. So here it is. We can comment it out just uh, to try it and. Let's run the checks report again, and here we can see how um, the checks report uh, doesn't show the recommendation 63 any longer. And we can run, for example, the technical dev again in order to see that now the technical dev score, oops, sorry, the technical dev score um, decreases one. So uh, as it should, this, uh, this technical dev should, uh, score should decrease over time. Uh, so this is uh, the very, very basic example of how to use Kodi for analyzing a single source file for Fortran modernization. Um, and now, um, I don't know if any of you have any questions before proceeding to the next demo of uh, Fortran um, optimization for performance. Hi, right, I have yes. a question. Yeah, sure. Go uh, ahead. Shall, shall we uh, try to to follow the the documentation to to test to test now the 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 code the code the demos or we can do it, it after you you're explaining. Uh, you you can uh, follow the same steps that I am doing. Uh, they are uh, documented. Um. They should be available um, in the in the link that you received. Yeah. Basically, is this one? Uh, no, no, not this one. This one is the the demo that I've just performed. Yeah. Uh, so you can do if you if you want uh, the step by step that I'm doing, but perhaps I will be a bit faster. So perhaps you will uh, uh, lost. Uh, you you can lose. A, a bit of my speech, so per perhaps it is better to to just watch now and then uh, optionally try to uh, do the same steps that I did. Uh, and you will have anyway um, a hands-on uh, different hands-on activities uh, with Kodi commands ready to be copy and paste from the guides. That are basically okay. the same se sequence of commands that I'm doing now, but. Um, for different codes and different uh, parallelization techniques. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Carl, I see you. Yeah, thanks. Um, do, so I'm curious if, uh, like, with the modernization recommendations, is it when we get to like the performance recommendations, is it going to be assumed that all of the modernization stuff? has been done first or not necessarily? Can you still get the performance? um still get performance recommendations that'll work correctly if you don't follow all the modernization yeah the the best practices uh dictates that uh 
first, in, in particular for Fortran, it would be ideal to guarantee that the, that the code complies with modern Fortran standards. Uh, in particular for Fortran, uh, for example, when there are a lot of label do's, go to's, uh, it is uh, it is very helpful uh, helpful to mo modernize the, the code, replace those legacy statements because uh, they can um, make uh, the compiler uh, a harder job uh, for op optimizing the code. So yeah, um, in the open catalog, you will find also examples of code the modernization checkers that um, achieve performance Im improvement uh, just by unlocking uh, compiler optimizations. So yeah, ideally first, uh, you you should make sure that your code complies with modern Fortran standards and then proceed with um, code the optimization checkers. But uh, if you're on a rush and you want to get speed up uh, in one step, you can also, of course, uh, start with the optimization checkers if you want, for example, for offloading. To ship you. Okay, thanks. If I can briefly share my my opinion on that, I definitely share the the opinion of the experts that um, discuss this these topics on the Portland Discourse group, because sometimes if you don't invest some effort in ensuring Fortran modernization checkers, what can happen is that your code can have hidden bugs or uh, details that, about the proper uses of the programming language that were overseen by the team or just you didn't have time to properly uh, implement them. And in the end, errors can show up in multi-threaded mode, in vector mode, when offloading. And if you track those errors down to the source or the, the problem, the root source, sometimes it's code things that you could have solved enforcing for term modernization uh, best practices. So personally, I share the opinion of it is worthwhile if you are looking forward to optimizing your code for multi-threading or even going to GPU, the more time you invest in enforcing for optimization best practices, the more likely you will have less overseen errors that can show up when you run in parallel or you run in, in vector mode. So definitely it's an effort that is uh, worthwhile uh, investing. But of course, it's up to any developer team or any developer to decide the balance between the effort on modernization aspects before starting the optimization as, uh, efforts. My opinion is that it definitely it is worth doing it, at least for the sections of code or the kernels or the components of your large applications that you want to execute in parallel or, or move to the GP. Mm -hmm. It's a, a personal opinion. I hope it helps. Right, but you have different levels, right? You have level one, level two, level three. Uh, what if, you know, because as you say, we can be in a rush. We say, okay, I'm just going to take care of the level one recommendation and level two and three, well, would be nice, but it doesn't prevent my code from running correctly, let's say. Yeah. Um, Regarding that, uh, the, the current L1, L2, L3 uh, labels that you see in the ranking of Kodi is our intention through the tool to leverage uh, best practices or recommendation from the experts. So in mm -hmm. L1 is something that typically all the community agrees that you should address. L2 is something that would be very, very nice to do. But of course, while we develop the tool, there are some checkers that we had not implemented at some point that maybe not be available at L1 in, at a given moment in time. So we are constantly reviewing this L1, L2, L3 uh, a, a prioritization of the checkers and we believe that the, in the end the best way to uh, apply best practices is first maybe start with those that are at level one or level two mm -hmm. or those that have auto fixes because Kodi will be able to make the implementation saving a huge amount of time to you and your team so we are thinking in changing or fine-tuning or adapting this uh, prioritization in terms of levels, because sometimes depending on your object, final objective, can be something that, as you said, you can't be missing important opportunities or important modifications mm -hmm. you should be doing in your code. So this is under constant review. So please, this L1, L2, L3 classification, take it with care, as it might be deprecated and substituted for something more um, uh, 
actionable by the user. Okay, so please go, go through the ranking top down, focusing on those checkers that have auto fixes, for instance, and start there uh, going top down. Okay. Right. So I haven't looked at your documentation, but do you actually make the case for these changes? Like saying, oh, encapsulate external procedure within module because of these and these reasons, and this makes the code better. I mean, here you just say to avoid the risk of calling implicit interfaces. It's like, okay, but what's the danger of calling calling implicit interfaces? Ah, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, if Julie says, if you can please share the open catalog and the entry corresponding to recommendation 68. Yes. I'm that's right. a very good question. In, indeed, um, that's part of the documentation at the open catalog that is open, free, and is knowledge of the community that we collect and curate. Mm -hmm. The intention is in the documentation, keep it to the minimum, but precisely go to the point of what you have uh, pointed out. So in point. this case, in the, in the web page should explain uh, what is the risk of using implicit interfaces. For instance, if you have an implicit interface, the compiler will not be able to detect at compile time errors that can only happen at runtime, producing a segmentation fault or six at runtime. So okay. implicit interfaces, explicit interfaces allow the compiler to do more thorough checking mm -hmm. of the correctness of your code and it will, able, it will enable the compiler to detect issues. But otherwise, it will not have enough information to detect them and report them. So this should be properly explained, uh, we hope, in the in the web page. Okay, perfect. I do agree. <laughs> just okay, to good, good to hear. <laughs> good to hear. Thank you. We always try to validate the information we yeah. we write in the web page, going to the sources in Portugal and Disco. Okay, that's very good. Thank you. Great. If no more questions, we can proceed with the next demo. We will use uh, um, the same source code of Imeno um, to apply um, CPU parallelism. So we are going to introduce with uh, the usage of Kodi for performance improvement. Great. So we will start with Kodi. Screening again. G Fortran email def ninety. And but uh, now I will be using the same license that um you have available at, at NERSC that uh have all the Kodi catalog available, not only the modernization checkers. With a uh, Kodi license available in NERSC, you will see the complete catalog that includes the Fortran modernization checkers and um, the Fortran optimization checkers. As you can see, we, we had 18 checkers before, and now we had 21 because we have some uh, performance checkers here. And uh, again, we also documented the step by step that I'm doing here in the live demos. Uh, in case you want to to follow them afterwards, uh, in this case I will be uh, copy and pasting it each um, each command. And in this case, I am I'm using so the screening, and now I am adding dash dash target architecture. So Kodi uh, focus uh, the checker results for CPU architectures in general. This unlock um, multi multi threading uh, related checkers. Uh, because we have also customers in the em embedded world that um, a checker for multi-threading is noise for for them. Uh, so these these checkers are activated uh, whenever Kodi detects that the architecture is a CPU and not a microcontroller, for example. And well, so this unlock the recommendation fifty one here, as we can see. Um, that it says that consider applying multi-threading parallelism to scalar reduction loop 
And here we can see uh, the autofixes available for different checkers. So we have an autofix available for vectorization, one for multithreading, and one to apply both at once. In this case, we're going to apply the multithreading, uh, the recommendation 51. Uh, let, let's see if I can share both uh, windows. Okay, let's try it. And okay, now let's run the checks report. Again, as, as we did before, first the screening, then the checks report. Here we can see the multi-threading opportunity together with the rest of the checkers. Again, there, there are more than 18 checkers because now Cody is including the performance related checkers. Now the verbose flag, as we did before, we add the verbose. We can copy and paste the suggested command here also. It is the same. And in, in this case, we are using also the check ID be, uh, in order to filter out the rest of the checkers because the verbose output uh, increased uh, the detail uh, quite much uh, and it can be overwhelming for when a lot of checkers are report. So in this case, we are uh, getting all the results for the recommendation 51 and in verbose mode with all the details. And here we can see the checker title, the suggestion, use rewrite. So the code rewrite command to automatically optimize the code. Again, a link to the open catalog and three different autofix options that Kodi provides. We will use the recommended one, the first one, that consists of oh, uh, using OpenMP uh, for instead of task weight and task look uh, from OpenMP also that are the, the other two optional uh, options. <laughs> and here we have, so we can copy and paste from here. That is the normal workflow, but in this case, for the sake of, of these uh, demos, we are not going to use the in place. If you copy and paste uh, from the Kodi suggested command, the actual the actual rewrite will be happen will happen on the same source file that is under analysis. But in this case, we want to generate a new file with uh, modifications applied by Kodi, so we will replace the in place with dash o. And here you can copy and paste it directly from the guide that is already with the dash O, Imeno Kodi F90. So we will have Imeno, the original version, and Imeno Kodi with the optimized version. Here Kodi makes uh, a brief um, dump of the changes applied to, to the code, the different data scoping and, perf uh, um, how do I say, um, the different, Parallelization techniques that, that were available, the one that was implemented, uh, OpenMP scalar reduction, um, the com compute patterns detect. Okay, and now um, the next step would be to compile. We can copy and paste, she Fortran. Okay, both versions are, are compiled, the original and the optimized one. And we run the benchmark. Here we, we choose uh, the input data set. Let's choose the large L, for example. Here I'm using the interactive mode, but basically this is uh, my, my laptop. <laughs> but uh, for this particular guide, we, we um, yeah, we, we have the S batch um, script example. In, in another document that we will see later if you want to run this on on Perlmutter with s batch but basically this will give uh, a speed up of around uh, 2x with an eight core machine that is my case um do you have any questions uh while this executes It was quite simple. We were following the same steps as before, but now applying um, applying performance checkers instead of instead of modernization checkers. 
here we have the result of the single threaded version and now we are running the multi-threaded version but here we can see how the first uh, invocation of the algorithm um, got uh, a lot of more mega flops now um, so this is the result for the first invocation of the algorithm and now it is looping with the rest and we will get the average. I don't have opened um, the Q and A doc uh, yet. Just in case you are asking questions there. Okay, here we have the result. Eighteen. Uh, so yeah, eighteen thousand megaflops. So this is an uh, a speed up of as as here the guy says, more than two x. And in case you don't have any questions. Uh, then we can proceed with the next demo that is using Kodi to optimize a C code um, for offloading to GPU, GPU parallelism. Manuel has been answering Q&A questions mostly. I have uploaded the welcome slides and the uh, um, slides by uh, Varo um, on the event page. So you want to take a look at also some of the like links you want to get access to some uh, slides. Here I have the document open. Uh, so, uh, Shaker, moving a block of code successfully to GPU, does Kodi provide info about best practices of scene destruction usage uh, completely statically based on the architecture details versus code analysis? That's a very good question. Uh, Kodi is able to identify SIMD uh, when it is uh, useful to use the, the SIMD uh, clause in, M in OpenMP offloading pragmas. Uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm not sure if uh, we are using uh, the Kodi the knowledge of different architectures to take advantage from it to decide whether to use SIMD or not inside offloaded code. I'm not sure. Perhaps Manuel knows. I don't know if that answered the question. We can always uh, consult it with the team, the technical team, and get back to you in the, as, as an answer in the Q&A. 